Hello, my name is David Eberts, and we're going to take a trip down Xenopus germline origin way. Uh, we're going to start at the very beginning with the oocyte and hopefully make our way to the mid blastulate transition where the gastrulation somewhat starts to begin and we're done kind of with the formation of the germline. From there on, it's mainly formation of the full embryo. Uh, but let's begin here. So, Xenopus are frogs germline having to do with the different areas that are set up by different determinants in the early uh, blastula and fertilized egg, we'll start with an egg. So just a round egg, and at the very beginning, we're going to have two different poles. We have an animal pole up top, which if we remember is darker because it has that sunscreen on that protects it from UV damage and other external things. And then down below we have the vegetal pole, which is white and clear. So this is an oocyte before fertilization. So we could draw a sperm in over here and say that it hasn't happened yet. So clearly just an oocyte. Inside the oocyte, we're gonna see three main maternal determinants that we wanna focus on. Maternal determinants, meaning that are present just from the mother making the egg. And the first one that we're going to look at is ectodermin. Ectodermin. And then we're going to have veg1. And then veg2. So these are the three main maternal determinants that uh, we need to be concerned about. And it's very easy to see how they got their names. Ectodermins up top, which eventually this area is going to be faded to become the ectodermin. And the veg is in the vegetal pole. We're going to get back more into how these actually interact and what they do. But for now, just know that these are the three main ones present before fertilization. After fertilization, so we'll get over here and fertilize. Fertilization. Wow, don't know if that's spelled right. Anyway, the sperm is going to enter into the egg, and that action is going to cause what we know as cortical rotation. Cortical rotation. And what that rotation will do is it'll basically shift everything that's on the inner side of the egg. So once again, we'll draw our egg here after fertilization. We still have our animal pole and our vegetal pole. And however, all the determinants that were down here, some of the determinants, I apologize, that were down here originally, are going to get shifted upwards about 30 degree, I believe it was, or so. So it's important to realize, though, that it, aren't, it is not these determinants that are being shifted. What is being shifted, actually, is disheveled. So the disheveled protein, which I'll label just as DSH, gets shifted from the bottom to the top after fertilization. And so our normal uh, axes that we have here of the dark up top and the white down below gets shifted a little bit. And so we can see we have a little bit of a rotation. And what's left here then is that this area that used to be black now is going to have white pushed into it. So it's going to be somewhat gray, which I will denote like this and call that the gray crescent. So the Great Crescent is one of those famous experiments that we saw that is really important for, uh, for Xenopus development. After fertilization, disheveled, which is normally down in the vegetal pole, it gets shifted up. I'm drawing it in blue now. It gets shifted up into the Great Crescent. And is thus important for the next stage in development. What disheveled does, as you'll see in my videos, about the different pathways is that the disheveled through uh, double negative 
pathway, regulatory pathway, will lead to the upregulation of beta catenin. So we can now imagine in this gray crescent that we have an up expression of beta catenin. Let me back up a bit. That's so I can edit back to that. Now with this shovel present in this new area, let's quickly address how it was moved through the cortical rotation. It's done via microtubules, which I will draw like this. So microtubules microtubules, which are present inside of every cell, uh, which are just a cytoskeleton, were normally oriented and then shifted and brought everything along that it was holding onto, such as the disheveled protein, up to there. And so that's how we get actually the reallocation of disheveled to the Great Crescent area. Now let's go a step further. 